Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. My name is Alex Dodds. I'm on the Open Cities team here at the Sunlight Foundation. And I want to welcome you to Unseal the Deal, how open contracting can improve your city's procurement process. Today we're going to be discussing a collaborative project between the Sunlight Foundation's Open Cities team, the Harvard Kennedy School's Government Performance Lab, and the City of Glendale, Arizona. Uh, this partnership was done as part of the Bloomberg Philanthropy's What Works Cities project and as part of Sunlight's tactical data engagement work. So we're really excited to share with it, share everything with you all today. Um, you can read all about it at bit.ly.com slash unseal dash the dash deal bit.ly.com slash unseal the deal we have got an amazing all-star lineup of speakers and it's uh as you can tell it's going to be a, a packed agenda we have a lot of really great things to talk about joining us today are going to be Stephen larrick the open cities director at the sunlight foundation my colleague here carrie klutz of the open contracting partnership Jen North and Oscar Hernandez of Harvard's Government Performance Lab, and Jean Marino and Liz Fernandez of the City of Glendale, Arizona. We have time for questions at the end of the program. For those of you following along on the web, you can type your questions into the chat box on your screen, and you can also tweet them to us at Sunlight Cities, and the official hashtag at the bottom is Open Contracting. So to start us, and uh, you can tweet your questions there or send them, chat them to us in the chat box. We will collect them and, and have an open Q&A at the end. So to start us off, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Stephen. Stephen? Thanks, Alex. And, and before I get going, it looks like there are quite a few participants on hold. So I don't know if we can okay. let a few of them in. Thank you. Good to go. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, we're so excited to have you here today to talk about open and effective procurement through this lens and approach of open contracting data. Um, as Alex mentioned, we've got an excellent set of speakers, uh, each of whom really bring their own valuable perspectives in their own right. Um, but together, we hope we'll present a cohesive picture uh, of the value of open contracting um, that's greater kind of than the sum of our parts here. Uh, so part of my job is to kind of frame that bigger picture so you can follow along as we get to it. Um, so first, I'm going to kick it off with a bit of background on open contracting data, how, how this work became a part of the work we at Sunlight Open Cities are doing um, with U.S. cities. Then I'm going to hand it off to Kerry Klutz uh, from the Open Contracting Partnership. We'll give a little bit of a deeper overview of, of the basics of open contracting as well as some of the, the, the common use cases for this open contracting approach. Um, Next, our friends at GPL, Oscar and Jen, uh, will give their take on how open contracting fits into their model for results-driven contracting. And finally, uh, Jean Marino and Liz Fernandez from Glendale, Arizona will bring that all together, sharing a bit of it uh, uh, about how the project we worked on together in Glendale um, kind of puts all this into practice. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, so open contracting is kind of at this rare intersection. It's one of these few policy areas um, where municipal governments can simultaneously save money, save staff time, uh, in, in a sense become more effective, while also being more transparent and increasing public trust in the process. Um, so this is obviously of interest to us as the Sunlight Foundation. For those of you who don't know us, um, Sunlight makes government more transparent and accountable. This is our mission in the digital age. Um, and so we first got going with open contracting, open procurement work in 2013, when our local team partnered with Code for America um, to launch a procurement focused initiative. Um, that resulted in 2013 in, in our first round of procurement data guidelines, uh, as well as with a report that uncovered a few trends in local procurement. In 2016, we saw, uh, uh, partly because of our work on the What Work Cities initiative, a big opportunity um, to update this work uh, in a way that would be relevant to the network of cities that we've been working with. Um, so in 2016, we teamed up with the Open Contracting Partnership. Uh, we did a, a big research project. We reached out to over 22 North American cities to document best practices 
um, and to update those guidelines into what is now our policy guidelines for municipal open contracting. And you can check those out on our website um, at sunlightfoundation.com slash procurement slash open data guidelines. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, uh, this, we in the Sunlight Foundation's Open Cities team, over the last three years, we've really had the chance to work with a number of U.S. cities at scale as part of the What Works Cities initiative. Uh, so I'm sure many of you on, on the, today's webinar are familiar, um, but just by way of background, um, this is a Bloomberg Philanthropies funded initiative. Uh, it's become a network of over 100 mid-sized U.S. cities and, uh, and five nonprofit partners that support the use of data and evidence in city government. And Sunlight has worked directly with over 60 U.S. cities since 2015 to support open data policy and practice. So next slide, please. Uh, an important part of our work in the past year and a half, close to two years now, um, has been developing a model that we call tactical data engagement. Um, this is a model that's truly about connecting open data programs to actual community use, external use of city data uh, for community impact. And uh, as you'll see in a moment, we think that open contracting is a really great example uh, of an area where external use really makes sense uh, and where kind of city interests are aligned with a lot of the external interests for using this data. Um, so the process for tactical data engagement involves uh, a, a kind of two phases and a four, four step process that you can see rotating through there in that beautiful GIF. Um, it, it involves first identifying a focus area, researching community information needs, and identifying open data use cases. Um, so again, we think that open contracting is a really promising uh, uh, focus area and, and has a number of use cases associated with it. You'll hear a little bit more about that from Kerry. Um, and then in the kind of as we move to the later stage of open data engagement, of tactical data engagement, uh, the work involves actually executing a targeted intervention to support the external use of, of city data. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about what that might look like in an open contracting context. So next slide, please. Oh. Looks like I can advance it myself now. Alex, if you're talking, I, you're on mute. Yes, go for it. Uh, so I overclicked and I don't know how to reverse it. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Technical difficulties here, everyone. Go back. Sorry about this. Okay. Great. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. Um, so this slide is, is just about kind of framing the, this larger context here. Um, so within What Works Cities, there are multiple partners, as many of you know. Um, while Sunlight's been supporting open data, um, the Harvard Government Performance Lab has been supporting uh, city procurement processes, and specifically through their model uh, for results-driven contracting. And so we really saw this opportunity here uh, to bring open contracting data to bear both as a use case for open data uh, and as a way of making uh, city procurement more effective uh, in a way that really ties into the results driven contracting model. Uh, so we'll hear a little bit more about that both from Harvard and from the actual work we did in the city of Glendale. So we've begun doing this work and again you'll hear about it from Jean and Liz later on. Next slide please. Um, so finally I want to leave you just with what's next and, and, and kind of our broader goal here. Um, if you're here on this webinar, we think that's great. It, it, it's great that you have an interest in open contracting data and, and we'd love to work with you. Um, so we're, we're actually, we've wrapped up the project in Glendale and we're looking for our next U.S. city uh, to support with open contracting data. So if you're interested in support from Sunlight uh, and the Open Contracting Partnership uh, and or from GPL um, for imp Im implementing open contracting data uh, or the open contracting data standard, reach out to us and let us know. You can email us at opencities at sunlightfoundation.com. So with that broader context uh, and with our, our secret agenda revealed, uh, I'll turn it over to Carrie Klutz at the Open Contracting Partnership 
is really going to give you all a great overview of open contracting data and of the use cases that they've highlighted. And that really were relevant to our municipal research as well. Great. Thanks so much, Stephen. Um, and thanks to everyone else on the call for joining us. We're, we're really excited to, to be here and talk a little bit about our work. And we're especially excited to start working more closely with Sunlight, um, looking at, at open contracting for U.S. cities. Um, so, Alex, if you go to the next slide. Um, I'm going to unmute myself this time to say, <laughs> if you control, you should be able to advance them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can, but there we go. All right. Um, so a quick, oops, one too far. Uh, uh, uh. Can we go back? There it goes. Okay. So open contracting. Um, I'm, as, as Stephen mentioned, I'm Carrie Klutz from the Open Contracting Partnership, um, and we are a collaborative based in DC that works with governments as well as civil society, technologists, journalists, academia, um, anyone that's interested in contracting, um, sort of around the world, in order to open up public procurement systems um, and focus on using that data. Um, so this is uh, our approach in a nutshell. Um, we work on one side, opening up the data, so data and disclosure. Um, and I'll get into the open contracting data standard in a second. And then on the other side, business, citizen, government engagement around using that data, um, moving beyond the transparency itself to address um, some, some key challenges that we'll get to in a minute. Um, so we look at the entire procurement process, um, not just the contract itself, but from the planning phase all the way through to the implementation phase. And we've designed something called the Open Contracting Data Standard, um, which is sort of a community-driven and curated uh, best practice schema to describe what data and documents we think, in, a, in an ideal scenario, should be published along this entire process and how. Um, and we at the Open Contracting Partnership run um, a free OCDS help desk, um, which is a service that helps any um, any stakeholders, particularly governments, that are interested in implementing the open contracting data standard. This was built around four key use cases that Stephen referred to earlier. Um, these are essentially key performance goals. Um, so we look at actually solving problems that governments um, and others are facing. Oh, I'm not sure. We'll, sorry, guys. This keeps moving without. Ah! There we go. Okay. So sorry. I think we're good. No, no, no worries. Um, so it was built around um, key problems that we heard from our stakeholders around the world that they were really struggling with. Um, one is ensuring better value for money in procurement. Um, another is improving the integrity of the procurement process, and in particular, detecting fraud and corruption. Um, the other is encouraging more competition for public contracts, um, and the Glendale, Glendale example that we'll hear about in a bit is a great example of that. Um, another is monitoring service delivery, making sure that the roads, schools, medicines that are meant to be delivered actually happen. Um, and then last but certainly not least is the idea of improving internal efficiency, uh, making the procurement process easier for people that are involved in it all along the way. Um, and we, uh, if I can move to the next slide, is it going to work? Uh -uh. So we've done some work around um, identifying particular indicators that need to be mapped in order to show that these things are happening. Um, we can go into the technical details uh, if anyone is interested later, but this is an example of some of the work that we've done to map um, the slide before, it's okay, was um, to map the, the actual data to the open contracting data standard. So happy to, to go into the details with anyone that's interested. Um, so this map is just shows a bit where we're working. Um, so as open contracting partnership, we focus at both national and actually supranational, um, as well as city and subnational level around the world. So we're working with over 30 countries, um, cities, and entities such as the European Union um, around the world um, to implement open contracting and the open contracting data standard, including a handful of major cities um, that are working on open contracting. 
Um, and I've put in a slide of Mexico City, if I can get there, um, where we have worked with them to, um, to publish their data along the entire, um, entire contracting process. So this is an example of um, at the implementation stage, you can see the amount of the contract as well as the actual money that has gone out the door from, from the um, Ministry of Finance. Um, so they're a great example, one of the first places in the world, not just at the city level, um, to publish across the entire procurement process. Um, in terms of cities, we're also in conversations with London. Um, in New York City, we've done a scoping around open contracting and held a, a data use event um, during Open Data Day with um, the mayor's office there. Um, and then in Paris, we're in the process of doing a scoping uh, with City Hall, and we're also talking to a bunch of different stakeholders around open contracting for the Olympics. Um, and one thing that we've really seen more and more recently is an interest um, at the city and subnational level in implementing open contracting. Um, so you're about to hear Glendale's awesome story, which shows in particular how vendors can benefit from, from an approach like open contracting. Um, but a few quick examples um, from our side, um, taking a step back. So we know that, for instance, in New York City, in Washington, D.C., in Atlanta, and a lot of other cities um, are all introducing or upgrading portals around public procurement. Um, and so if I can get there, oh, one too far. Um, but a great example at the national level from Ukraine shows how in particular open contracting can help connect data across the entire process and has really improved efficiency. Um, and so they're a unique case because we've been working with them for three or four year, years now and have taken baselines at the beginning. So we have um, some really interesting statistics to show. Uh, we've seen a 40% increase in competition uh, because of this approach, a 10% increase in supplier diversification um, which is quite a jump. Um, and then the biggest headline in terms of internal efficiency in particular is that they've seen a 1.7 billion euro savings since the portal launched in 2015, which is huge. So we're talking, um, you know, not just, not just small amounts, but, but really, really impressive numbers. Um, and then one last example from Bogota, a massive city in Colombia that I'm sure a lot of us have heard from. Um, just like in DC or Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm from, or any other city around the world, um, they offer free school lunches um, and spend, in this case, they have a budget of $170 million. Um, when we started looking at this city, it was distributed among just 12 suppliers. Um, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, based on, um, a scandal that sort of bubbled to the surface. Uh, the mayor and the secretary of education of Bogota um, set up a radical reform that was based around open contracting. Um, and some of the key stats are here. They, they established minimum and maximum prices for meals and made the entire contracting process fully open and competitive um, through a portal online. And that actually led to the uncovering of a price fixing scheme um, um, that had been um, established among several of the suppliers. And as a result of this, the, um, the number of suppliers that are actually bidding on the contracts of the city went from 12 to 55. Um, and that includes 14 companies that had never done business with the government before. Um, so that's a really concrete example at the city level of how open contracting can really help to really boost um, competition. Um, so that's a very quick overview of, of some of the, the projects that we're working on. Um, hopefully they provide some inspiration um, and we're of course here and happy to discuss further. Um, and now I'll hand it back to Stephen um, in order to hear from the Government Performance Lab as well as the experience of Glendale. Thanks everybody. Sorry, I'm muting myself. Hi everyone again. Um, so isn't Carrie great? Uh, we, we just love having the Open Contracting Partnership as allies in this work. Um, and as I mentioned, we're also incredibly lucky to get to work with the Government Performance Lab at the Harvard Kennedy School um, and to be able to work directly with them on a city support project um, in Glendale. So now to tell you a little bit more about uh, their results-driven contracting model, as well as to introduce the project in Glendale, um, I'm going to hand it over to Jennifer North and Oscar Hernandez with the Harvard GPL. 
great. Thanks, Stephen. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you. Um, I'm Jen North, and my colleague Oscar Hernandez is on the phone as well. Um, and let's see, we can go to the next slide. There we go. Um, so we at the Government Performance Lab uh, work pro bono with cities and states across the country to help them tackle their toughest challenges across a wide variety of issue areas that you can see on the slide there. And our work often focuses on helping jurisdictions use the procurement process as a tool uh, to make progress on those challenges and to improve outcomes and reach their goals. And through Bloomberg Philanthropy's What Works Cities initiative, we've been able to work with cities across the country to help them um, identify their highest priority pr procurements, implement results-driven contracting strategies to orient those procurements toward outcomes, and overall elevate the procurement function in government, um, giving it the strategic importance that it deserves. Next slide. I can, there we go. Um, so through our work on um, both our results-driven contracting project and our open contracting data project with the city of Glendale, um, in partnership with Sunlight, we've really seen how open contracting data works hand in hand with results-driven contracting strategies and not just in terms of communicating externally to the community, but also internally to city staff. And so for this portion of the webinar, we're going to share a brief overview of our work in Glendale, what we mean by results-driven contracting, and how open contracting data can support the application of RDC on ind individual contracts and also support um, entire systems change to create a strategic procurement system. So first, a brief overview of our work um, in Glendale. We can go to the next slide. There we go. Great. So our work with, on open contracting data with the city of Glendale and with Sunlight really began as an outgrowth of our results-driven contracting project with the city where, where the GPL was helping the city on one of its high-priority procurements. And we realized that there was an opportunity to partner with Sunlight and conduct research to help Glendale understand how it's used open contracting data to improve its procurement processes broadly, and then specifically generate better and, and higher quality bids. So broadly, this project um, followed um, many of the steps that Stephen outlined in the tactical and data tactical data engagement um, framework that Sunlight uses, um, and also the the framework that we use in many of our projects as well. So this project included a site visit where GPL and Sunlight met with city staff to hear about their experiences with the procurement process. Um, we conducted interviews with the vendor community to gather feedback about their experience with the procurement process and to understand what data would be most helpful for them. Then we worked in collaboration with Glendale to develop a pilot data set of upcoming capital improvement projects. And then we went back to the vendor community to get their feedback on that data set. So you'll hear more details of how this project um, came to be and, and, and what Jean and Liz experienced um, throughout this project um, shortly. But for now, we're going to share our lessons learned of how open contracting data supports um, results-driven contracting. So Oscar, um, I'll let you take it from here. Um, and thanks, Jean. Can we, yeah, can we move on to the next slide, please? Great. So uh, the, the, what we wanted to do here uh, is, is really take you through what we mean by result driven contracting strategies and discuss how, how open contracting data can support applying those strategies on a single contract. And as you can see in this slide, uh, our first result driven contracting strategy is identifying goals and desired outcomes. And, and this is really where good contracting begins. Quite often, we see contracts are renewed year over year without asking what the contract is supposed to do or what my jurisdiction is really trying to achieve with that contract. And, and when cities really specify goals and desired outcomes and put those goals up front and center in the solicitation document, they can achieve two things. The first one is really ensuring that the solicitation document is structured to realize those goals. And then the second one is to signal to the vendor community what's important for the city about the contract. And identifying clear goals and contracts is, is really the first step to create a partnership with vendors to really achieve those goals. In our work with Glendale and with other cities, we have seen how open contracting data can support goal development. And what we mean by that is that 
by collecting and releasing data about past procurements, open contracting can spark early conversations about previous contract results and, and what improvements are required for future selection processes. And that really sets up the stage for outlining desired outcomes and then designing the right procurement strategy with the, to, to align with those goals, which is what we're aiming for originally. Um, so moving on to our second results driven contracting strategy, uh, and once you have defined contract goals, it's important to assess your understanding of the marketplace. In some cases, uh, students may find that they need to improve uh, that understanding of, of the goods and services that can really meet their needs and policy goals. And there are several ways or tools that students can use to that. They can choose uh, informal methods, including uh, including vendor conferences, phone calls, surveys, and focus groups, um, or they may choose more formal solicitation practices, like, request, like, so, like releasing a request for information. And by engaging with the marketplace, the cities not only improve their understanding of it, but can also increase competition, as, as, as we have been discussing. And we have found open contracting data to be a natural tool to communicate with the marketplace. So by releasing information about the planning phase of the procurement process, that can include information about upcoming contracts, procurement plans, um, and past contract details, that can really foster vendor participation and competition. And also, it helps vendors improve the quality of their bids and their proposals. Additionally, uh, we, we think that having a robust vendor portal, or we've seen how, how having a robust vendor portal allows vendors to search through current opportunities and submit questions to a solicitation process, which can also help increase the number of bidders and the quality of their bids. So moving on to our third strategy, uh, is, is really establishing metrics within the solicitation and contract so that you can track targets toward the stated goals that are in your contract. And those metrics can include a number of things, including activities, outcomes, impacts, and cost effectiveness of contracted activities, but overall, introducing this, this information or the metrics into the solicitation document itself increases accountability during the contract management phase of the procurement. And that's because having clarity on the metrics that will measure contract performance is really the foundation uh, to build uh, a relationship on collaboration. Uh, in our work, uh, we have seen that open contracting data can help you to specify outcome metrics. And that's because when you collect past contract information, you start understanding what your past contract performance was, and then that in turn helps city staff to identify and choose a set of metrics um, and, and benchmarks that are relevant for that picture. Moving on to our final and our fourth and, and, and last results driven contracting strategy is to actively manage contracts. And, and, and that happens once you have selected a vendor. And, and basically what we've been doing so far, uh, or like what we have been describing so far in, in, out, in, in our strategies around outlining goals and, and, and defining metrics, that's really the foundation to establish a solutions-oriented relationship with contractors. Active contract management is really the way to carry out that relationship. And, and, and cities can hold High frequency data oriented meetings with their vendors to track contract implementation to make that happen. And that, that, that really allows them to celebrate successes of what's going well, detect and rapidly respond to problems, and, and, and make consistent improvements in the contract as, as they implement it. Um, and we have found that in some cases, having contracting data can really support contract management. And what we mean is that. Governments should carefully consider releasing information about contract implementation. In, in some cases, that can really unleash uh, really positive feedback loops by drawing awareness to contract effectiveness. In, however, in some cases, the, the nature of the, the information released should always aim, aim to maintain effective partnerships with service providers. That's kind of our message about contract management um, and, and performance data. Uh, and, and with that, I'm going to hand it over back to Jen, who's going to talk about strategic procurement systems. Thank you, Thanks, Oscar. Oscar. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Jean. We've got just one more slide. Um, so, uh, Alex, if we could go to the next slide. Um, great. 
So we've been talking a little bit about applying results driven contracting strategies to a single procurement and how open contracting data can support that. And now we're going to talk about how open contracting data can support system wide approaches to strategically managing high priority procurements. So um, broadly, when cities effectively set up the strategic procurement system, it generally includes one, regularly examining their universe of upcoming procurements, two, establishing a set of criteria to then identify which procurements are most important. Um, then three, apply results driven contracting strategies to those high priority procurements. And of course, lastly, continuously evaluate the system to ensure that those priority projects are on track with their implementation. And there are a variety of organizational structures the city could use to create such a system. Um, in our work with the city of Louisville, they decided to use what they called an executive procurement committee made up of representatives from a variety of city departments. And this committee was charged with meeting quarterly to review the list of upcoming procurements, establish criteria, and select high priority procurements. Um, and then that committee established working groups for each of those high priority procurements. And those working groups were charged with analyzing the procurement specific needs and creating a solicitation that addressed those needs using results driven contracting strategies. And so there are a number of ways you could set this up, but that's generally what this kind of system includes. Um, next slide. So in creating a strategic procurement system, open contracting data can play a pretty significant role in developing and implementing the system to achieve the three goals that we've set out on the left-hand side of the slide. So the first goal of the system is to regularly identify your high priority procurements early enough in the procurement cycle to allow for appropriate planning. And so if a city is actually already regularly publishing a list of upcoming procurement opportunities, whether it's contracts set to expire or up for renewal or new opportunities, um, this list can easily be used as the foundational data set uh, for examining your universe of upcoming procurements. And similarly, if a city is already collecting information about contract dollar value, past performance, contract length, or expiration date, um, as part of its open contracting initiative, those data points, again, could serve as some of the criteria that a city might use to determine their priority procurements and contracts. Second, we anticipate that a strategic procurement system could be quite helpful in improving coordination and collaboration between and within departments. Um, because we suspect that the system would be quite helpful in identifying procurements that require cross-departmental collaboration. And using open contracting data to identify and track procurements that cross department may be particularly helpful in breaking down information silos between departments and just creating clear information sharing protocols. Lastly, um, and really a, a foundational goal of a strategic procurement system is that it creates citywide visibility for priority procurement and in turn elevates the procurement process to a place of importance while ensuring that it reflects the values of the city and is aligned with the city's strategic goals. And of course, open contracting data can play a significant role in creating that visibility by communicating both externally and internally a city's priority contract and the progress the city is making on those priorities. So with that, I'll now turn it over to Jean and Liz to talk more about the Glendale project. Thank you, Jen. Sorry about that. Um, good afternoon or morning, everyone, depending on where you're at around the country. My name is Jean Moreno. I work um, in the city manager's office here at the city of Glendale, and I'm responsible for a variety of very high level special projects. Um, and one of the things that I always talk about when I go out to departments or out in the community and talk about the work that we do here at the city is, you know, the city can't solve all the world's problems. It really does take a, a community to help really dive into the issues that we're trying to solve so that we can serve the community better. And so I have to give a big shout out and a thank you to both the Sunlight and GPL teams um, because without their work and their assistance on this project, you know, we wouldn't have gotten to where we are today. You know, cities always have the best of intentions in terms of stakeholder outreach and, and really um, you know, creating a focus around a specific issue, but sometimes um, we just, we, we aren't exactly 100% successful. And so having the outside eyes and the outside help was really, really critical for us. Uh, next slide, please. So to provide a little bit of context about who we are as a city and an organization, um, Glendale is a suburb of Phoenix. We're located immediately um, west of Phoenix. Um, in the, the western part of the Valley of the Sun. 
Um, we are Arizona's sixth largest city with a population of a little over 245,000 people and 81,000 households. So we're, we're not small where we would be considered a mid-sized city. Um, in terms of the geographic area, our incorporated area includes over 60 square miles with an additional 30 square miles of unincorporated land. Um, we're a full service community, so we offer police, fire, water, solid waste services, in addition to development services, parks, and community services. And the reason why I wanted to tell you a little bit about our size and who we are is because that kind of gives you a little bit of an understanding of the volume of, of contracting that we do as a, as a city. Um, we do use a council manager form of government with a little more than 1,700 full-time employees and about 15 departments. So in terms of distinction, um, our community has a significant sports and entertainment district anchored by the University of Phoenix Stadium, um, which will be hosting our third Super Bowl in 2023, woohoo, um, and uh, Gila River Arena, both of which attract a significant number of events and visitors to the Valley every year. And the reason why I share this with you is because in terms of who we are and what we do and what we have to offer, we're a fairly sophisticated community. Um, but we know we have room for improvement, which is why we wanted to be a part of the What Works Cities community and are very, very thankful for, for both of the opportunities to work on um, open data, open contracting, results-driven contracting. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit about our current state when we started this project. So we had, you know, as previously mentioned, we had begun the journey with Sunlight to talk about open data and how we could improve transparency with our information in order to make better decisions. Um, and then with GPL into the results-driven contracting and you know that interesting intersection of these two, it was interesting because when they first came to us and said, hey, we'd really love to do this project with you, um, it just com made complete sense, right? Because of, because of that intersection. And it really did shine a light on a problem that we had hoped to resolve that we kind of knew was looming out there. Um, essentially, you know, we have a $689 million annual budget, um, but we really don't have a holistic means of tracking contract spending. So we believe our contract spending on formal procurements is around 11% of the overall budget, so about $73 million, um, but we have no detail on vendor performance at the organizational level. And so that's a lot of money, it's a lot of tax dollars um, to be responsible for and it's not to say that we aren't um, that we aren't taking care of that money or being good stewards of that money, but we just feel like we can do a better job. And so we know our procurement division processes about 36 formal requests for proposals on an annual basis. So that does not include requests for quotes, requests for information, or invitations to bid. This is just the formal RFPs. Um, we're averaging about a 10% failure rate on those RFPs, though, due to a lack of qualified responses. Um, and in several cases, we've had no bidders at all. And so these could be on, um, you know, pretty important procurements for our organization. And so we really did want to make sure that we were taking a holistic look at what are some of the tools available to us? How can we engage the, the stakeholders to help us um, procure for, for goods and services in a way that will help us to ensure the, the highest quality and the best value for our citizens. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we are in the process of developing a new citywide strategic plan with very specific objectives that we hope will create an impact in these areas, which is, again, another reason why um, this, this project was very enticing for us. Um, we want to create a renewed focus on improving our resource alignment, so spending our money better, improving our asset management, making sure that um, the tools and the capital investments we're making are managed to the best degree, and then optimizing our processes and services, so making it easier for us both internally and externally, but most importantly, our stakeholder engagement. We have a very specific objective around involving more people from the community in the process of decision making. And so this was a really important part for us. Um, you know, having more data will enable us to make better decisions about how we're using our contracting dollars. And our goal is to use the open data and transparency to provide information that will help vendors prepare responses to our solicitations. So essentially we have a four part goal. We wanna get more bids. We wanna increase competitive, competitiveness of those offers. We want to attract new bidders and we want to increase our contract performance. 
And all of that obviously translates to value for our taxpayers. Um, so we know that to be successful, we first have to listen to the vendor community. Um, we have to make our process easy. We have to improve information sharing and transparency. And we have to involve our partners in doing that. You know, ultimately, we'd like to get to that model that Jen talked about with a strategic procurement system. And uh, we do believe that we can get there. Um, but to, to talk about the project in detail and our plan for the future, I'd like to turn the presentation over to my colleague, Liz Fernandez, who is going to um, tell you all about that piece of it. Liz? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Okay, sorry about that. Um, can you change it to the next slide, please? Okay, so I'm gonna briefly talk about our project. Um, like Jennifer mentioned, we did start with uh, interviews. So GPL and Sunlight um, came on and helped us with interviews and this really gave us the opportunity to self-assess where we were at. Um, and then we had to choose which data set we would be sharing with our uh, vendor community to get feedback. So we chose to do a capital improvement project coming up. Uh, the reason we chose that is it, is it was already available data that we had and it does have large dollar amounts associated with it. Um, it also gave us the opportunity to look at what other cities were doing. We looked at their, you know, cities that had um, open data who had been publishing contract information. Well, what kind of things were they posting on it? Um, so this included things like the description of service, the date the city needed the services or goods, um, the estimated budget amounts. So we were ensured to incorporate this and in ours as well. Um, so when it came down to it, we pulled everything together and it was emailed out to our vendors. And we included both types of vendors, those who worked on uh, our capital uh, improvement projects and the vendors that do regular solicitations for our formal procurement. Um, from that survey, we received 48 responses and we, we learned a lot. So one of the things is we found out that most of our vendor community would go to our website for the main source of information. We learned that they would try to spend quite a bit of time looking for past contract information so that it would help them uh, you know, put together their bid. Um, we also learned that the data set that we released was understandable, which was a great, which was wonderful. It's what we wanted. Um, but they gave us feedback on ways that we could improve. So, for example, uh, some of the vendors let us know uh, how to improve the data set column titles to be more um, clear of what we were uh, providing. Um, and then the next step is in addition to those surveys, uh, 16 interviews were conducted by GPL and Sunlight of our vendor communities. And that information is very interesting as well. We learned that our vendors uh, felt that we were sharing information through informal channels so that vendors who you know, had done business with the city before knew a little bit more. So really by us proactively posting this confirmation, uh, information, we'd be assisting more vendors to help prepare for solicitations and encourage them to participate in this process. Um, we also learned that our vendors wanted to be timely informed when we made decisions on the awards. We learned that they wanted to be able to submit online budget submissions electronically, which our current practice is they have to physically come to City Hall um, to uh, uh, submit their bid. Um, we also learned that vendors uh, wanted previous procurement information and they wanted to make that available. So right now, some of them would request public record requests and submit that and so we were having to provide that information versus now if we know they wanted it we could proactively provide that um, next slide so with all this we, we with quite a bit of information so then we took it and we put it together and we have a plan of what we're going to do moving forward and we're really happy that we had a lot in place to already address many of these um, so the first is that we made the decision that we are going to be publishing the CIP and ex expiring contract list um, proactively. So we're going to be posting this every single year. The great part with the CIP uh, list is that estimates up to five years in advance. Um, the expiring contract list will be a year in advance, but the more we can get ahead of this, our, our intent is to pr uh, post with as much um, advance notice as possible. Um, we also, because of this, we know the data set our vendor community is interested in, so we can cater some of that data uh, to their needs. Um, the next tool that we have is a uh, contract search tool. So in the past, our website did have a portal 
uh, for vendors to find contracts, but you had to know exact the exact date it was approved, or you had to know exact vendor names that it, who were the contracting parties. Um, this new system that we have, which is Laserfish, it's a public-facing tool that allows for word searches. So you can search for keywords, uh, you can search for vendors or key phrases, um, which will really help them find the information easier. So that already went live this summer. Uh, we've also started the conversation to link our solicitation to the previous contract. So to, when we ha when we publish our solicitations to have a link to the old information so they don't have to go look for it even though it will be available on our website to make it as easy on them as possible um, we also have done staff training this year so we were very lucky to have a citywide training with GPL um, they were able to come out here and we trained a hundred city employees on results driven contracting um, and our goal is to continue and incorporate that information in our annual required um, procurement training, which we do anyway. So we do that training annually. We wanna make sure that we keep this information and this best practice in everyone's mind, especially for those who are actively involved in procuring for the city. Uh, we also have a new ERP system. Uh, we have Tyler Munis. We are implementing July 1st. Uh, the great part about this is the it was, the timing couldn't have been better. We received all the information from the vendors, some of those highlights that I mentioned, and were able to address them through this system. So as I had mentioned earlier, they wanted to be able to submit their bids online. Well, now through the system, we can. So starting July 1st, they'll be able to submit their bids completely online, which will keep them from having to come to City Hall. Um, we also, through the system, are able to send notifications once an award has been made. So once you click an award, it emails every vendor who has submitted that a decision was made. So we are definitely trying to address these requests that our community, our vendor community has made. Um, through the system also too, our vendors can sign up directly for commodity codes they're interested in supplying. So currently we have a website that you, it's all or nothing. So basically if I want to do business with the city of Glendale and I sign up, I'll receive every solicitation that comes through. Versus through this, our vendors really wanted keywords that they could search for and looking for. Um, so that's, that's already gonna address that concern. And um, last but not least, uh, we are going to be monitoring performance. So as um, Oscar and Jennifer had mentioned, um, to be actively, you know, the performance measures and the way we're monitoring contracts, that's the important piece as well. So through our new ERP system um, with Tyler, it does have an ability for us to measure performance. Um, and it is tied specifically to the contract and to the vendor. So at any given point, we can put, run a report to pull out all of these performance measures and when, when they, they were, like when milestones were due or when um, something that we set out needed to have been done to see if they're continually performing or failing to perform, um, which will help us um, especially when it comes time to the solicitation project process and we want to review a vendor's track record with the city, we'll be able to review that data. So I know that was a lot in a short time, but that, that was a project. It was, it's been really a, a great process with it and we're very um, excited that most of this stuff we're actively um, working on at this point, if not with, that we've already addressed most of it. So I'll turn it back to... Um, to me, to Alex. Carrie? Alex. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liz um, and Stephen, Carrie, Jen, Oscar, and Jean. Um, we are at the point of the program where we're going to take some questions and answers. Um, once again, you can type them into the chat box on your screen. Um, and I will go ahead and answer one of the most common questions that we get, which is yes. This webinar will be recorded and we will be sure to share it out uh, afterwards, probably a little bit later this week. So um, I can get started with a question that I have, um, which is for Jen and Oscar. Um, you mentioned in your presentation, Jen, that uh, cities can align their open contracting goals to other strategic priorities in the city. Can you talk a little bit about how that has happened and some successes that you've seen there? Oh, and make sure to unmute yourself if you are responding to that question. All right, thank you. <laughs> um, so absolutely, so I think, um, you know, we talk a lot about um, 
kind of a city strategic goal being the, the foundation for, um, you know, procurement as a whole and um, individual solicitation documents, um, uh, you know, specifically, and open contracting data um, is really linked to that. So, you know, if you think about the, the kinds of strategic goals that are important to your city and the procurement um, that, that, you know, your contracted spending that is linked to, that, to those strategic goals, um, you know, open contracting data communicating um, internally to city staff through data about those goals and then communicating externally about those goals is really important. And, uh, you know, you could communicate a wide variety of data, you know, from what contracts are you um, currently uh, using to reach those goals, how are they performing, um, what kinds of contracts have you released in the past, um, you know, what, who are your vendors, um, there, there's a number of things you can do to communicate about those strategic goals. And, you know, with, with the overall aim of using your procurements and contracts to, to realize those goals, because often um, procurement is seen as kind of a back office administrative function, but it can really be a tool to realize um, the things that are important to your city. Yeah, definitely. And I know that that can help with building support for this approach, even among your colleagues within city, uh, within city government, making it clear that this can help them achieve their goals as well as yours. Um, and sort of along those lines, for Jean and Liz, I've got a question, which is, um, what, if any, pushback have you gotten either from vendors, you mentioned that we did an extensive vendor interview process, um, or from your colleagues who might have concerns about making contracting more open. What kind of pushback did you experience as you went through this? Uh, this is Jean. I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at that and Liz, feel free to jump in if you have anything to add. So um, when we first started this project, you know, obviously with anything new and especially with going through, you know, some organizational changes anyway, you know, we did get some pushback from staff and I think a lot of it, you know, just really stemmed from not really understanding what we were trying to accomplish in terms of, you know, the, the outcomes. And um, similar to what Jen had mentioned is that, you know, oftentimes procurement is seen as a formality and a, and a you know, back of office administrative function, and it's not, you know, it, it can be a very, very powerful tool for your community. And so um, really, I think what made everything gel is when we had GPL come out and they provided the training for our staff and then people started, the light bulb started to come on. And so I'm really excited about that part of it because I think that as we continue to monitor our progress over time, we're going to see um, hopefully some results similar to, um, it, similar to, you know, what some of the other communities around the nation and around the, and around the world have seen. And so, um, on the employee side and the internal side, I think we're gaining some momentum. Um, we ha obviously have some better tools that Liz had talked about. And then on the on the vendor side, I, I feel like that they were um, exuberant about being asked. You know, I, we actually got some really good um, participation from our, our vendor community. And I think that just just being asked for their input meant a lot for them and I know that um, they're probably looking forward to you know having some better tools at their disposal as well so I think that overall it was you know it was a very well received um, internally I think there was a little bit of pushback in the beginning but I feel like we're gaining some momentum around it well, that's great and um, I think that takes us sort of back to the very beginning of this discussion which was during Stephen's presentation when he said that we are always on the lookout for new cities to partner with on this work. Um, I'm really glad to hear that having outside folks come in and help everybody in Glendale get aligned on the goals and ideas behind this project um, was helpful. And um, as Stephen mentioned at the top, we would love to work with your city or answer questions that anyone else has about this. Um, we're almost at the top of the hour, and those were all the questions that we're going to take for now. If you have more, you can email opencities at sunlightfoundation.com. We're always happy to talk or share ideas. 
Um, and like I mentioned, this recording will be posted online and we'll be sure to share it out with everybody who joined us. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll say bye. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.